Greetings ladies and gentlemen from Dr. Bertram Everidge for another episode of Emergency Cocktail Preparation. Now today we are talking gin. Uh, I am somewhat unusual in terms of being a steampunk in that I am more of a vodka person than a gin person. This was met with uh, much consternation amongst uh, my peers um, who have tried their best to convince me otherwise. And while I still prefer vodka to gin, uh, I have been able to find some gins that I do like, and this is one such gin. This is a Cannonball Gin, which is a Navy Strength Gin. Now, what is it that makes a gin Navy Strength? Well, unsurprisingly, it comes from ye old nautical days, from the time when our vessels would have um, gunpowder on them, and uh, very often the gunpowder would be stored in the same place as the gin. Now, it would be something of a problem if the gin or the spirits you had on board the vessel were to spill and get onto the gunpowder and mean that you can't fire it. So, by being at least 57%, it means that if the alcohol is goes onto the gunpowder, the gunpowder is still able to be fired. And this was actually used as a testing method to make sure that the gin was sufficiently strong and of the right uh, the, the right strength to be uh, to be used on board the ships. Let's give this one a try. Cannonball gin. It's less floral than normal gins. Very uh, very peppery. Quite strong as well. As I said. Yes, it's it's got plenty of pep, plenty of pow. No, it doesn't have that floral element of normal gins. It's a gin that's right up my street. Now, let's make a cocktail with this. As I mentioned before, I'm normally a vodka fan. I do like vodka martinis. I've never actually had a gin martini, which is the original. Let's give this a go. So, what we're going to need is a mixing glass full of ice and a measurer. I'm going to take some vermouth. We don't want a huge amount of vermouth. Make sure it's dry as well. I'm going to say maybe half a shot. Yes. Now, martinis are really, really individual things. So just because I'm doing half a shot doesn't mean you, uh, you, you would need to do that. You know, you can, you can really uh, play around with it. Let's put some of this gin in here. I'm going to say three shots of the gin. So a strong drink, a really very, very strong drink. Navy strength drink here. Let's take a stirrer and just give it a very, very, very good stir. Let's get everything nicely mixed up. And the gin and the vermouth cooled down in the ice. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to strain this into a suitably nautical cocktail glass. That does look lovely. Now, question of garnish. Um, Again, martinis being so very, very individual, um, you could garnish it with a slice of lemon, a slice of lime. Lime would be pretty good for our nautical theme because of you know the uh, the whole limey thing of um, lime being consumed on naval vessels uh, to prevent scurvy. Um, but I like olives with my martinis, and again, I was thinking the sort of sort of salty, briny taste of the olives would also be quite nautical. So I'm going to go for a pick. and a couple of olives. So I've never actually tried a gin martini before. Let's give it a go.
It's good. It's, it's a strong one, like when you're having a, a vodka martini. The Cannonball Gin being, uh, you know, that sort of peppery thing. I think a, a, an ordinary gin martini might not be my, my cup of tea, but this, this flavour of the Cannonball Gin is uh, it, right up my street. So very enjoyable indeed. So if, like me, you are somewhat late to the gin martini uh, party and are curious and fancy giving it a try, have a little play, see what gins you like, what garnishes, and just have fun with it. Average out. All I want is...